my name is Rudy. I am new to this community, so allow me to introduce myself. I started my life in a usual pet store, but nobody wanted to buy me. Do you know what the people wanted to buy? Hamsters. Because they are so sweet. <laughs> but one day me and my colleagues were sold to a lab. So I changed my profession and went to the medical research center. But I had bad luck there too. They wanted to test new drugs, but I was in the comparison group and got only placebos. But now I changed the sights and now I'm a scientist. And today I want to present a new idea for the generation of regenerative energy. And for that I use hamster wheels. When you have a hamster in a hamster wheel, these little fat bastards have the force of gravity there. And when the hamster starts to run, then he has a special speed and that means when we know the distance from the hamster to the middle of the wheel, then we could calculate the turning moment of our system. And if we introduce uh, angle phi here, then we could rewrite our equation like this. Okay, we are not interested in the turning moment. We want to know the power of our system. And therefore, we need our rotary frequency. This can be calculated with the speed of the hamster and the length of one round in the circle. And here I use the variable r for the radius of the hamster wheel. Okay, now we can put everything together and get this expression here. I'm not quite happy with the radius of the mass of the hamster and therefore I rewrite it. I introduce a new variable here, the height of the hamster and therefore we could rewrite our equation like this. And you see, we could rewrite the fraction in the middle like this. And there you see, when the height of the hamster is much smaller than the radius of our hamster wheel, the fraction in our brackets becomes zero and therefore our whole fraction just becomes one. Okay, and now we have everything. This is our equation of the power a hamster can produce in its wheel. Okay, so which values can we use here? So, a common hamster has the mass of about 200 to 650 grams. And its maximum speed is 8 to 10 kilometers per hour. And if you have a look at our equation, you see that if we increase the speed and the angle in our system, then we produce more power. And to get these lazy bastards to run faster, we need extrinsic motivation. And my experiments show that an average hamster gets up to an angle of 45 degrees. So now we have everything together to calculate how much power one hamster wheel produces. So we have our values here and we rewrite it to our SI system and therefore one hamster wheel produces 1.5 watts. You may say that it's not so much, but our system is 
stackable. So now you might ask how many hamsters we need. It's quite easy to calculate that. So one hamster will produce about 1.5 watts and an average household needs maximum power of 14.5 kilowatts then you can easily calculate that the needed amount of hamsters is about 9500. And now you might think oi, 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 how much space do I need for them? Okay let's say we use hamster tubes not wheels because our hamsters can then share the space. And my experiments show that a diameter of half meter is quite good. It's not so convenient for the hamsters but they are at work and not on holiday. So and we need a space of 20 centimeters per hamster and if we stack our hamster wheels like this uh, a good size would be 8 times 8 tubes and therefore we need 4 meters times 4 meters. And now we can calculate the length of our system. This is just uh, our 9500 hamsters divided by 64 tubes. So we have about 150 hamsters in every tube. And therefore when every hamster needs 20 centimeters our tubes will have a length of about 30 meters. Some of you might now think how should I get so many hamsters? But this is quite easy. You may all know the fairy tale of Noah's Ark. And that means if we have one couple then we have in our first generation one female and one male hamster. And a female hamster produces eight children each time and let's say they are 50% male and 50% female. So we get in our second generation four females and four males. And now let's just go on with this. That means in the next generation our four females and four males produce 16 females and 16 males. And we can go on. So we know in our first generation we have one and one, in our second four and four, and then 16 and 16, and we can go on and on and on and on. And in our eighth generation we have enough hamsters for our system. And if you know that one generation needs only three months to generate the next generation, then we are talking about a time of two years. A female can produce eight children per time and we've seen they can produce children four times a year. And that means every female gives us every year 16 females and 16 males. Okay, so how many females do we need to keep our system running? Male hamsters are much bigger and stronger so we should only use them in our hamster wheels. And I found out that these lazy bastards can't run 24-7. They need breaks. So, so I found out we need four shifts a day and that means that we need about 32,000 hamsters every year for our system. So we know that an average female produces only 16 males per year and that means that we need about 2,000 females to keep our system running. Some of you might have noticed that our 2,000 females not only produce our 32,000 males but also the same amount of females. 
That means we have an overproduction of females of 30,000 per year. But I found a solution for that problem and it makes my system even more environmentally sustainable.